Hi everyone. With me are today Dr Mark Feach and uh, Police Commissioner and um, State Controller Darren Hine. Um, can I just begin by saying first of all that uh, right through this our number one priority has been to protect the health and safety of Tasmanians and to save lives. And uh, Tasmania is in a good place, but obviously we have challenges uh, in other states that we need to be cognisant of. Uh, we have some of the strongest border restrictions in the country, and it's been a very important safeguard to ensure that we can protect Tasmanians from uh, the risk of the virus. This has not been easy for Tasmanians, and as we stand here today, uh, we're now more than 50 days, though, without a positive case. Uh, and Tasmanians need to be congratulated uh, for their efforts. Uh, it's been nothing short of outstanding, and importantly, Tasmanians have uh, followed the rules uh, they've dealt with some really difficult personal circumstances and uh, we've got to a good place. But this isn't over and it's not over by a long shot yet. The other point I would make uh, in my opening remarks as well is that we will see, as we have said uh, on many occasions uh, when we've stood in this room, that we will see positive cases in Tasmania. Uh, we are well prepared though, but I think that Tasmanians uh, should remain vigilant and aware importantly, uh, that you know, this is a highly infectious virus and there will be at times cases and we will need to respond uh, when they emerge. If anything, the events of the past week have um, uh, underlined just how infectious this disease is and the situation in Victoria at the moment now as millions of people are back into lockdown, uh, once again forced to stay home to save lives uh, and I want to extend uh, our thoughts uh, and support to the Victorians uh, that are in lockdown at the moment uh, and to those that are doing their very best to uh, ensure that they can keep that community safe. It is a difficult period of time uh, and it's important uh, that I think as a country we acknowledge that Victoria will go through some very difficult circumstances. However, what this message is to me though is that it is so important uh, that we don't become complacent, that we don't think that this is over. We need to remain vigilant, uh, we need to remain disciplined and importantly we need to uh, ensure that we do everything that we can to keep ourselves safe, our families safe and our communities safe. We have made decisions based on public health advice every step of the way and we will continue to do that. Our aim is to ensure that uh, Tasmania doesn't suffer a second wave as Victoria is now suffering. Uh, our aim has been to protect our communities, uh, to support our healthcare workers, to protect our businesses and to ensure that as we gradually step back into a more normal way of life that we can do so safely. Right now uh, we're all enjoying many activities that for a period of time there we couldn't enjoy. Uh, we're going and having lunch with friends, we're playing sport, we're doing a lot of things in our community that uh, once we took for granted and then we took those uh, small activities away from people and we had to, as a state, do some very, very tough things. It's important that we continue to ensure that we don't forget, uh, that we don't become complacent, that we don't go back to that. And for the businesses in Victoria, uh, the thousands of businesses in Victoria, that we certainly do not want to put Tasmanians back in that position where uh, small businesses have reopened, uh, businesses of, um, of uh, larger scale as well and a second wave would be devastating. I cannot stress that enough but importantly uh, we are in a good place and if we remain vigilant, if we remain disciplined, if we remain responsible uh, we will manage our way through this uh, effectively and safely. Now, in terms of what's occurring in Victoria, we will continue to assess uh, the border risks uh, and our restrictions in terms of travel, as I've said, over the period until the 24th. But it's important that we respond to the circumstances that are occurring in Victoria uh, at this time, and I want to outline uh, some changes. Uh, as as of uh, midnight tonight, we'll put in place additional restrictions on Victorian travellers, as I've said, effective from midnight tonight. Last Sunday evening, we
put in place uh, additional restrictions on essential travellers from Victoria, including additional hygiene and movement restrictions uh, in response to what was occur occurring in the Melbourne community. Uh, those travellers were contacted directly. Um, that's why we haven't been speaking about it. It's just one of those things that the people that needed to know were contacted and those restrictions were put in place. But it's important to know that those restrictions were uh, uh, put in place at that uh, particular time. Victorians uh, will not be allowed to travel to Tasmania. Uh, and anyone who has spent time in Victoria in the 14 days prior to travel will not be permitted to travel either. Uh, the only exception to that will be uh, Tasmanians uh, returning home um, and they will have um, quarantining arrangements. Uh, if visitors arrive from Victoria without a, an exemption letter, they will be asked to return home. Uh, I know that is difficult, uh, but at the end of the day, we need to be very clear in terms of what's occurring with our borders. Um, and they will be turned back at their own expense. Tasmanians who've spent time in Victoria in the 14 days prior to travel will be re required to quarantine in one of our government hotels. As Tasmanians would be aware, in recent times, Tasmanians returning to Tasmania could quarantine in their home. Uh, Tasmanians that have spent 14 days uh, or have spent time in the last 14 days in Victoria prior to returning to Tasmania will be asked to quarantine in one of our government hotels. This will include uh, families with children uh, and, and also fly in, fly out workers. If there are Tasmanians that are flying into Victoria and working in Victoria and uh, coming home. While Victorians uh, can apply for a compassionate exemption to travel to Tasmania, uh, these exemptions are unlikely to be granted in the short term due to the rapidly changing circumstances in Victoria. And I would say to businesses and organisations uh, in Tasmania that are seeking essential workers, um, uh, you will need to demonstrate that that expertise cannot be recruited from any other state in the country first. Currently the benchmark is that we don't have those skills here in Tasmania and we will then look at providing an, an exemption um, and the Commissioner makes those decisions. Uh, but we will be asking any uh, one that's seeking an essential worker uh, exemption from Victoria uh, or for a Victorian um, that they will need to demonstrate that those skills are not available in Tasmania first. People that are coming to Tasmania from other jurisdictions bearing in mind that uh, Victoria is obviously our hotspot at the moment. Uh, but other jurisdictions in the main have a very low incidence of uh, the virus and in many cases don't have any community transmission. Uh, they will be allowed to transit through uh, Tullamarine in the main, a Victorian airport, provided they do so directly and do not leave the airport. In terms of the spirits, our rules are very clear uh, and they don't change in terms of the fact that anyone travelling on the Spirit currently that does not have an exemption as an essential traveller um, is quarantined anyway. Those rules are currently in place and uh, remain in place. Obviously, um, if it's a Tasmanian returning under the circumstances that I have outlined in terms of the uh, treatment for uh, someone who has spent more up or time in the last 14 days in Victoria and they travel home on the spirit, uh, then they will be uh, quarantined in a government hotel as well. The rules remain uh, unchanged in that regard up until the 24th of this month and on Friday I will be providing an update in terms of uh, the border restrictions for other states and territories. But I want to um, be very clear in terms of uh, a couple of matters and certainly in terms of um, uh, Victoria uh, we will not be removing the border restrictions uh, for Victoria on the 24th of this month. Uh, we will make decisions over the coming days and obviously with an eye over the coming weeks in terms of the other jurisdictions 
but as I've said, this Friday I'll provide a, a more detailed update in terms of our thinking in respect of um, our borders on that day. But uh, to be clear, uh, Victoria will be out. I want to um, just touch on freight and logistics. Uh, we don't expect to see any interruption to freight and uh, logistic movements uh, into Tasmania. Uh, in terms of our freight movements, obviously exemptions are requested and granted uh, at the moment. I make this point as well in terms of, say, for example, the Spirit, which has drive-on, drive-off freight movements. Um, uh, around 80% of the freight that is transported on the Spirit is driven on on the Victorian side uh, or on the Tasmanian side by uh, drivers and then another driver meets the ship when it, uh, when it docks and takes uh, those containers off uh, on the other side. So in terms of freight coming from Victoria, around 80% of it, um, the Vic no Victorian travels with it. Uh, in terms of uh, other freight, uh, then they will operate under the very strict protocols in terms of being an essential traveller into the state. We've had in Tasmania uh, very positive compliance levels and uh, I just want to um, say that uh, Tasmanians need to be uh, congratulated uh, and our emergency services and those that have been uh, dealing with our borders uh, need to be thanked for the work that they have done. In terms of uh, other steps that we're putting in place, uh, at Tullamarine um, there will be a biosecurity officer uh, working on the Melbourne side uh, and likewise with TT Line uh, to ensure that people understand very clearly that before they get on the plane, if they have no exemption, uh, that they'll be taking a flight across Bass Strait and on the other side they'll be asked to get back on a plane and head home. Uh, we want people to understand very clearly what the rules are and those uh, steps will be put in place. As I've said, uh, on Friday I'll provide a further update in terms of uh, travel uh, into and out of Tasmania. Uh, but we will not be opening our borders uh, to Victoria on the 24th of this month um, and obviously we'll continue to assess what's occurring in other states as this, uh, these challenging um, uh, times uh, uh, roll themselves out and we move forward. I want to um, uh, make this point though and make it very clearly to Tasmanians, this is a difficult time. Um, it's a challenging time. Um, we have been uh, through worse times. Um, we're not closing down businesses. Uh, we're not asking people to, to lock themselves into their homes. We're not restricting them from going to shacks. Uh, what we need to do is to take this sensibly uh, and responsibly, as I know Tasmanians will. Uh, continue to do the right thing, understand that we're doing everything that we can to ensure that there are protections in place uh, at our borders that will ensure that we can keep Tasmanians safe. Uh, know that we have put in place uh, significant steps in terms of uh, contact uh, tracking and tracing, uh, rapid response teams. Uh, importantly, that our testing remains at a high level and I would encourage any Tasmanian uh, to get tested should they have uh, even the slightest of symptoms or have had symptoms um, in, uh, in recent weeks. Just for a, a quick update on testing, um, over the last week uh, nearly 3,800 tests have been conducted. Um, over ne well, nearly 550 in the last uh, 24 hours and nearly 55,000 tests overall. Uh, and I would encourage um, Tasmanians um, to get tested uh, the mobile uh, testing units are being rolled out around the state and there are obviously some fixed uh, testing units. Uh, take the opportunity to get a test um, if you have any concerns at all. Uh, I'll hand over to uh, Dr Veach to uh, add some comments, but uh, to be clear, it is unfortunate what is occurring in Victoria. Um, now our thoughts do go out to them, uh, but I want to be very, very clear on this particular point. Uh, if you're from Victoria, please don't come to Tasmania. Uh, if you do come to Tasmania and you haven't been granted an exemption, uh, then we will send you home. Uh, I want to be clear on that. 
Uh, this is about ensuring that we protect uh, the health and safety of Tasmanians. Uh, and uh, whilst you've got a range of challenges that you're working through in Victoria, we understand that. But at the end of the day, uh, we would hope that you would work with us and ensure that we can keep Tasmania safe as well. Thank you, Premier, and good afternoon. I'll just make a few general comments uh, and then I'd be uh, happy to take some health-related questions. Um, as the Premier has stated, Tasmania is in a fortunate situation. It's now 50 days or more since we've last had a case uh, transmitted in Tasmania. Um, and we've maintained a, a high level of testing uh, throughout the time since then, which has been excellent. Um, during that time and before then, uh, there's been a lot of work to get the health system well prepared to manage cases, uh, and they have managed cases, uh, uh, effectively provided good clinical care to the cases uh, that have needed that care um, uh, throughout the pandemic so far. Uh, public health has also been uh, developing their strategies for uh, contact tracing, uh, case management. Uh, of course, we had those measures in place to deal with the cases, but we're also looking at how we can ramp up our response if we needed to, to deal with a, a greater number of cases. Uh, it's particularly important, though, that we do an effective response to each and every case uh, that occurs uh, when it occurs in, in, in Tasmania. Uh, we've also carefully relaxed uh, measures uh, that have enabled greater social mixing, uh, closer densities in various venues um, and a range of activities that were, as the Premier mentioned, um, uh, stopped for a while. Um, you'll be aware of the events in Victoria and I, and I think it's fair to say that's um, uh, given many of us in public health um, pause for thought. Uh, we've recognised we've reached uh, the settings, if you like, with um, social mixing and um, proximity uh, measures um, uh, getting back towards normal. Uh, they're not actually all the way back to normal yet, uh, but we certainly have to be very careful uh, before we uh, relax measures any further. Um, I understand that people in um, Tasmania uh, may well be quite fearful, uh, at least concerned, and I think in many instances quite fearful uh, about the coming months um, uh, because we've been in a situation with uh, no cases. That's been reassuring, and I hope that, that Tasmanians have had confidence uh, in the measures that were put in place to protect them and the responses that have been done. But I know that people are concerned about the risk uh, of cases occurring, uh, and they're probably looking particularly to Victoria as a setting uh, where uh, risk could be imported to Tasmania. Uh, I do want to remind Tasmanians that when you look at Australia uh, beyond Victoria, um, you see a country which has one of the lowest rates of coronavirus infection uh, in the world um, and good measures to diagnose coronavirus cases all around Australia. Um, so uh, it follows from that um, that uh, some of the uh, safest places, if you like, to see visitors from uh, are people from mainland uh, Australia outside of Victoria. Uh, unfortunately, as we all know, Victoria is now uh, uh, battling a, uh, a number of uh, outbreaks and cases uh, in large numbers uh, through metropolitan Melbourne. Uh, fortunately, it's principally uh, confined to metropolitan Melbourne, uh, but Melbourne has unfortunately had to undergo a, uh, a pretty severe restriction of their activities akin to what we were uh, operating at way back in about March, April, uh, which is something I'm sure we all feel for uh, Melburnians as they undergo that and hope uh, above all, that it's a very effective measure uh, at um, containing the infection in the northern and western suburbs uh, and preventing further spread of infection in other parts of Melbourne. Um, so I think the Tasmanian public should be reassured um, that the risk uh, of people from outside of uh, Melbourne is very low uh, and that the risk of people from Melbourne and, and Victoria uh, is something that we're managing, uh, as we have all along, uh, with border restrictions. Uh, and as the Premier explained, uh, there really would be very few people uh, enabled to come from Victoria to Tasmania uh, for uh, the coming weeks, uh, but with the exceptions of uh, people who are Tasmanian residents, uh, and what we expect will be quite a small number of essential workers from Victoria, uh, around whom there'll be provisions to make sure that when they come into or back to Tasmania, 
um, that, they, that they're here safely uh, and in circumstances where they can't uh, spread infection to someone uh, in the unlikely event that they are actually infected. I heard one of the leaders say earlier today, um, I'm not sure from where, but they were kind of saying it could be anywhere this is happening to, not just Victoria, that they've kind of just been unlucky there. Do you agree with that? Do you think that it could have been Tasmania? I think that's wrong. Um, I think there's been extensive testing throughout Australia. Uh, all the states in, in Australia are testing at a high level, are very vigilant with their surveillance for uh, coronavirus. Um, so I think it's exceptionally unlikely uh, that there are pockets of coronavirus uh, around other parts of Australia that haven't been detected. It's impossible to completely rule out an occasional case, uh, but when cases have been detected in recent weeks in other states, there have been people who've come across from, there have been people who've come from overseas into Australia, uh, or in a small number of instances, people who acquired their infection in Victoria uh, and have travelled recently. Just more broadly, I think, 50 days now, I think it is something like that, without a case. How pleasing is that for you to see? Do you believe now that there might not be any coronavirus in Tasmania? I think it's, it's probable that there is either no coronavirus in Tasmania or exceptionally uh, little coronavirus in, in Tasmania. Um, but um, it is likely that as we progress over the coming months um, that there will be a case that occurs in Tasmania. Uh, there'll be measures in place to try and prevent that happening and there'll be measures in place to try and pick it up when it does happen and to respond to it. Uh, but I think the Tasmanian community has to know uh, that's a likely event uh, and that we've been preparing for months and months now uh, to deal effectively with it. And just on the number of people getting tests, have you seen that jump since um, things have got worse in Victoria? Are they kind of using that as a measure? Um, tests have been pretty steady, mostly around 500 or so tests being done a day. There tends to be a little bit of a drop off on Sunday and Monday, um, uh, and then midweek it picks up. And there was a, a day a week or so ago, I think around about the time that Victoria um, uh, unfortunately uh, became widely known for their outbreaks, when there were about eight or 900 cases. So um, that could have prompted people. Uh, but the important message is for people with symptoms of colds and flu-like symptoms to go and get tested. Uh, it's absolutely important that people with uh, flu-like symptoms go and get tested. We keep up those numbers of testing that we're doing and we do it statewide through general practice, through clinics, um, uh, wherever people can go to the, the website and find the, the nearest place to get tested. Uh, that's the way we're going to pick up cases quickly uh, and get on to them so we don't see a, um, uh, a, uh, a spread of infection. How long do you think, or how long do you think it's likely um, before we move into a changed gathering restrictions again, where we allow more people over at people's houses? At the moment, we're actually looking much more to making sure that as we open our borders, we can do that safely, um, and that we have restrictions uh, or prevent the entry of people who could be coming from risky places outside of Tasmania. That's my priority at the moment. Uh, it's not actually on further relaxations, um, but uh, we will always continue to consider the things that are not yet completely relaxed and see if it's safe to do so. But I think it's a very important message that, um, as Victoria to some extent demonstrates, if you're in a very relaxed environment where everybody is mixing substantially as they used to, things can get out of hand quite quickly. Uh, so I think that's quite chastening and it reminds us to be very careful about further relaxations of measures. I know we are in stage three now, but is there a stage four or is that just kind of back to, to normal life? Um, some states have developed stage fours. I'm not quite sure it's up to stage four. Um, but look, there's a small number of, of, of aspects of daily life that are no longer, uh, that are still limited, the number, the density of people in settings um, and some activities such as uh, free-form dancing in nightclubs and the like. Um, and we really do need to think whether it's necessary or wise to move to make the next step towards business as usual. Uh, I think at the moment that it's probably sensible to move very cautiously, perhaps slowly, towards any further relaxations. But that doesn't mean that, that in public health we're not looking at, at, at whether it can be done. We know people want to get back to normal but um, there's risk as you further relax.
Do you think Tasmanians have become complacent when it comes to social distancing and other measures? There are surveys that are done every week, nationally conducted surveys, that look at how people are reporting uh, their social distancing. They're asked you know, how well they keep their distance from people um, and how many people they have close encounters with each day. And what's that, sh what's that shown over the last few weeks um, is that uh, everywhere around Australia uh, people are mixing with more people than they did in the previous time frame when we were locked down and they're reporting that more often they get quite close to people. Um, and that gives us a measure of how likely infection is to spread. If people are mixing more and getting closer together, that means that infection is more likely to spread if it gets into the population. As it turns out, um, the combination of those um, two measures based on what people tell the survey um, shows that Tasmania is actually doing marginally better than the rest of Australia uh, in terms of uh, limiting our interactions and keeping our distance from people. Um, but it's only just enough uh, to have us in a, in a situation where it's about a 50-50 chance that if infection was introduced into our community and people were mixing freely, uh, that it might or might not take off. So, um, uh, long answer, sorry that was a bit complex and I might have lost you along the way. Um, but the short answer is Tasmanians haven't got back to the free mixing and close encounters that they did of in early this year. So they're keeping their distance a little bit, um, but uh, they're drifting back towards normal um, and only a little bit less close to normal than the rest of Australia. So we still need to uh, keep our distance from people, um, attend to hygiene uh, and get our coughs and colds tested. Sorry, Premier, does the situation with Victoria make it all the more urgent that these discussions with airlines about direct flights from other places happen quickly? Well, those discussions with airlines have been underway now for some time. Um, I'm confident that uh, should we open up to other jurisdictions that there will be some direct flights. Uh, but again, uh, flights, like a, any other form of um, transport, are demand-driven. And you know, I would expect that um, in the interim, uh, Tullamarine will need to be looked at as a, as a hub, but we'll need to be satisfied uh, and we are taking steps to understand the COVID safety plan that's in place at Tullamarine to ensure, and un ensure that people can continue to transit through uh, that facility safely. Uh, but I think that um, yeah, many Tasmanians, um, should we open to South Australia for example, uh, would probably uh, want to take a direct flight to Adelaide uh, rather than via the hub of Tullamarine. Will consideration be given to potentially running the Spirit from elsewhere rather than through Victoria? Look, the Spirit has um, uh, got two roles. One is um, obviously passenger transport, which it's doing very little of at the moment. Uh, the other is getting our freight to market, and especially our fresh freight. Uh, and those hubs are on the Victorian side. And so, you know, the Spirits will remain uh, travelling between Tasmania and um, Victoria. How long will the new rules that you've announced today remain in place? Well, so we'll obviously uh, review them on an ongoing basis, but Victoria have put in place a six-week lockdown, you know, and I think that that obviously provides uh, some guidance in terms of uh, uh, as we move forward um, and, in, as I say, on a weekly basis, uh, inform ourselves of what's occurring in the Victorian situation. And you say the people who arrive here from Victoria will be asked to turn around and people will be asked to go into quarantine. Uh, do they have a right of refusal or is that just, they're just going to be turned around? Well, look, firstly, in terms of quarantine, if somebody uh, at the moment, um, uh, they don't have a choice. They, they will go into quarantine if they arrive in Tasmania now. Um, and that's been um, uh, administered and managed under the, um, uh, by the, the, uh, the state controller. Uh, in terms of um, those Victorians that arrive, we will obviously be putting somebody at the Victorian end uh, to ensure that checking is undertaken and to ensure that people understand. Uh, that um, they shouldn't be coming to Tasmania and we would hope that we would see very few uh, Victorians that would take um, uh, nothing more than what would be a, a an hour-long plane flight at significant cost only to um, have to take one back. We've heard from Qantas and Jetstar that they're looking at putting in flights to Tassie as soon as next week direct flights to places like Adelaide and Brisbane. Given that aside from Victoria everywhere else in Australia is quite safe, would you look at potentially opening our borders earlier than July 24? No. 
No, we, um, we've laid down a plan in terms of how we would approach um, opening up our borders and uh, taking the time to, to understand what's occurring in other jurisdictions. Uh, that plan, I think, has stood us in good stead. Uh, it's provided us with the opportunity to review on a daily and weekly basis the circumstance with Victoria, and obviously, as I've made uh, an announcement today, in terms of that, a couple of days earlier, we've announced that we won't be travelling uh, or opening our borders to Victoria. Uh, but in terms of um, uh, the 24th, that would be the date that, um, that is, we're still planning for. Uh, but obviously, we will be informed by public health in terms of um, uh, their view on other jurisdictions uh, around the country. Um, at this stage, but you know, I'd be fair to say, as, um, as Dr Veach has, met, has uh, commented on today, that you know, there is very low uh, transmission um, anywhere else in the country outside of Victoria, even in New South Wales, which has had you know, some numbers in the main, they have been returned travellers from uh, overseas, international flights, and they have been picked up in quarantine. Uh, the incidence of community transmission is very low around the country. You've announced a change to the way that um, exemption permits will be assessed. What's the status of the current exemption permits? Will they continue on or will they be void from midnight? Well, my understanding is that they will be reviewed, um, but I'm happy to, to have uh, the Commissioner uh, take some questions on that, if you like, if there are any other questions for me. We've just heard um, that there's been, from the unions, that more trainings have been let in as essential workers without having to quarantine, despite Tasmanians being able to do those jobs. Are you concerned that there seems to be still people coming in in that situation? Well, there is an assessment that's conducted in terms of whether or not um, uh, those skills are available. Um, and I think there's, um, uh, you know, there is a distinction between um, uh, what, it, what a union would uh, view as a broader Tasmanian workforce and uh, the work that's, um, that's being undertaken. And I don't think that the unions in many cases get to see the, um, the request uh, for exemption. That's a matter for uh, the state controller and for um, uh, the PIPWI under normal circumstances. But again, the Commissioner can, um, can speak to that. Uh, but I want to assure Tasmanians, um, you know, the steps that we have put in place here, both in terms of our borders, um, uh, the rules that uh, have been uh, in place now since uh, about the third week of March, um, have stood us in good stead. And in terms of the way that uh, the Essential Traveller program has been administered as well. Uh, you know, Quite obviously, we have high testing occurring in the state, and at this stage, uh, we have no evidence of the virus, um, and we'll continue to test. Um, so, when I look at the rules, you know, uh, they have worked, uh, but we need to tweak them today, and we need to strengthen them today because the risk has um, increased uh, in the state of Victoria, and that's exactly what we're doing. But I'll hand over to the Commissioner. Sorry. Oh, just one more. Sorry, you, you said that you've made um, additional changes to the rules for essential travellers uh, at the weekend. On Sunday night. Was there a particular reason you didn't announce that? Does that undermine public confidence that you're being open and transparent with people? Well, in terms of those, in terms of those rules, um, uh, they were communicated directly with the travellers themselves, which was that if somebody was entering from uh, Victoria that they needed to take additional hygiene measures um, and that their movements uh, were um, strictly limited within the state. Um, you know, in terms of uh, who received the message, the people that were uh, required to receive the message um, uh, were informed. I'm not certain as to whether or not that would have been placed on the website, so it would have been made public um, at the same time as well. But importantly, it was a matter of communicating with a very small number of people. Uh, and I think um, over the last five days uh, in total from around the country, I think there's been around uh, uh, 10 essential workers that have been allowed into the state, so a couple of days um, under those uh, rules. But I'll hand over to the uh, Commissioner. I'm happy just to go straight to questions. How many compliance checks have been undertaken since that new order was issued on Sunday night requiring the Victorian workers to wear masks? Uh, there's been numerous uh, compliance checks as in, and obviously we're now focusing on those people coming from Victoria um, to make sure that those people are in quarantine uh, are checked and also if they need any uh, assistance as well. And they're also receiving uh, follow-up telephone calls to uh, check their health. Those were specific checks since Sunday, just to workplaces or something to check that they're wearing masks. Is that? Uh, we've been working with uh, workplace safety to uh, to ensure that they go and check those workplaces uh, and provide that advice uh, to make sure they are wearing masks and things of that nature. Would you make it compulsory for 
for even essential workers coming in to have to do a, um, a coronavirus test. Uh, the testing is a, uh, a certainly a, uh, a topic of discussion and I'll leave that to uh, Dr Veach to actually answer that. But uh, since last Wednesday we've been advising those essential workers that have been coming into Tasmania, they've been getting a leaflet to say that they should be wearing masks and take additional uh, precautions. We have been monitoring what's going on in Victoria and uh, that prompted the change in the, the order that uh, is issued under the State Emergency Management Act that they must wear uh, masks and uh, to take additional precautions, including uh, limiting their movement within Tasmania. And again, this is so fast moving, we need to uh, continue to monitor what's happening around the country and to get the public health advice to make sure that uh, we continue to see what's happening. But it is important to, uh, to know that the borders are, are not our only protection. We need to let people move in and out of Tasmania for whether it's uh, um, for healthcare, for, um, for compassionate reasons, uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, so we must be vigilant, we must ensure that we follow the rules within Tasmania. Because as Dr Veach said, there is a high likelihood that we'll get another uh, positive case within Tasmania. Doesn't mean to say the borders have failed. Uh, we do have to let the movement of people for Tasmania to continue to, to operate. So we must continue to, uh, to take those uh, really important steps that we can do to uh, keep ourselves safe. Do you know how many people have arrived in Tasmania from Victoria in the last couple of weeks? Uh, we have a, everyone who comes into uh, Tasmania must uh, uh, fill out an arrivals uh, card and that's, uh, that card actually prompts people to uh, check their own health uh, and to make sure they make a declaration. We're actually moving to a, an electronic system which will be implemented over the next couple of days. It's called a good to go app um, and that we'll be able to do that a lot more efficiently, not only for the person making the application, but for also the processing. And we'll have uh, better information available to us to monitor some of those things. So people will see in the next few days that'll be uh, implemented. But everyone who actually arrives in Tasmania will have to face a biosecurity officer uh, to make sure they've got the right paperwork, they've got the right applications and there are actually some of those health checks as well. So we're doing all we can to make sure we do protect Tasmanians. But it's not a hard border. There, people have to move in and out of the state um, to keep our state going. Uh, but we're taking everything we possibly can. Will there be any police presence at the airports here um, stopping people from coming in from Victoria? Uh, as we know, there's uh, from midnight tonight, if you arrive at the airport, um, you will be uh, met by a biosecurity officer to remind you, unless you've got the right paperwork, you won't be allowed into Tasmania. If those people arrive in Tasmania, as they do at the moment, they'll be met by a biosecurity officer and normally a police officer and ascertain what their status is. Those who um, are Tasmania residents uh, can um, isolate at home, but that is changing from midnight tonight as well, especially if you're from Victoria. Um, and if they need to go into quarantine, that's where they go. So there is not a free flowing of uh, people. There are um, interactions uh, at every level within Tasmania. And I think the Premier mentioned it, will that look similar on the Melbourne end as well with the biosecurity officer there? Uh, there is an app and the role of the biosecurity person in, uh, in Melbourne, whilst they haven't got any jurisdiction, just to make sure that they um, have followed the process and to explain what they need to do. And it actually takes away that interaction between a, a paper form and uh, it's got an electronic form, a Q scanner as well. But obviously there'll be uh, some people uh, who will need to fill out the paperwork who haven't got access to those things. So we're putting in steps to assist people. Um, but. Um, what's happening in Victoria, we need to tighten up our borders and to our precautions in relation to uh, Victoria. And as the Premier said, it's, uh, it's sad what's happening in Victoria and, uh, and we wish them well in their journey uh, in dealing with this. But it just reminds us that this virus could come into Tasmania. And if it does come into Tasmania, it doesn't mean to say a border has failed or anyone's failed. We just need to be really vigilant uh, and to work with public health to make sure we do contact uh, trace. We do follow the rules. So it is up to us, each and every one of us, to help keep ourselves safe. There were complaints particularly from unions last week about the way the exemption system's been working. How do you respond to those criticisms? There is a rigorous process that people have to go through to, uh, to get those exemptions. It goes to biosecurity in the Pipwe. Um, it is assessed once they fill out their uh, form online. Um, once that assessment uh, takes place, they're either rejected or forwarded on to the State Control Centre. It goes through another assessment process. Um, and then, again, it can be rejected or accepted of that process. 
then those who weren't being accepted, it actually comes to me personally or those, um, the Deputy Commissioner who acts in my place if I'm not available, uh, and we again assess it. Um, the business needs to provide uh, um, evidence to support their application about the skills that aren't available in Tasmania. I'm not going to second guess that, I haven't got time to do that, I'm not going to look in the, the, uh, the paper to see if these people can do those skills. So it is an arm's length pro uh, process, it is a rigorous process as well. Are police still undertaking those um, checks on people that are meant to be quarantining and have you issued many fines at all? Um, Luckily we haven't issued many fines, we've certainly given uh, direction uh, and I have to say the uh, support of the State Emergency Service volunteers to help us doing those checks uh, and the Tasmania Fire Service has been amazing. Um, they have worked tirelessly to assist us, police are still doing those checks um, and as I said before we're actually concentrating those people in quarantine at the moment from Victoria. Um, but we are doing checks. Uh, there are, is over a thousand people in currently in home quarantine and there's over 400 people in, in government quarantine. So we're taking this seriously. Um, it is a, a huge impost to all of those agencies but, uh, with Communities Tasmania to Pipwee and everyone working together to make sure that uh, those people are doing the right thing. Uh, if they aren't doing the right thing and people in the community know that, they can contact the public helpline um, and uh, provide us with information so we can follow it up to make sure they are doing the right thing. I'll just, um, I know earlier we saw when we had these tough restrictions people would get kind of loaded onto buses and taken to hotels. Will that happen again now or has it been happening the whole time? That is happening now to make sure that those people get to the hotels and I said we've got over 400 people in, in hotel quarantine at the moment. Uh, that pre uh, presents uh, unique challenges for those people looking after uh, the hotels and the communities Tasmania uh, are managing that process very well but as you can imagine uh, there are lots of challenges for those people in quarantine and those looking after quarantine uh, as well so there is a, a well-defined process that they go through.